All right, I'm here today with Kelly Williams Bolar. Um, Kelly, as many of you know, is a staff liaison, a parent liaison here at Available to All, and has been helping us reach out to parents, um, um, families whose kids have been uh, excluded uh, from public schools for either unfair and or illegal reasons. Um, as many of you also know, Kelly um, has a story about um, uh, getting her kids into a school that they weren't zoned for and uh, coming up against the criminal justice system. So we're going to get to that story, but want to dig a little bit uh, in with Kelly on, on uh, where she came from and, and things like that. So uh, welcome, Kelly. I'm so glad to have you here today. Thank you, Tom. I'm so happy to be here. Um, this is awesome. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, well, so have really, you've been a huge inspiration to me um, and to many people um, around the United States. You know, we've kind of got this antiquated system of, of geographic assignment of kids to schools, and you really defied that, but, um, and bravely defied it and, and paid a, a bit of a price for it. W w curious to talk to you, um, just to hear more of your story. Where, where did you, did you grow up in Akron? I did. I grew up in Akron, but I also lived in North Carolina. Okay. I lived in East Point, Georgia. Okay. <laughs> so, you know, but 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 I'll, I'll say eighty percent of the time, uh, Akron. Ohio. Did you go to high school in Akron? Yes. Oh, you did. Okay, cool. Um, and so, did you go to the Akron Public Schools then? I did. Yeah. And so, what? What was that like? Because really, the Akron Public Schools are what you, you were trying to get your daughters a better option than the Akron Public Schools. What was your experience of the Akron Public Schools when you were in those schools? Did they change over time? Like, did you have a pretty good experience? Or, or had you seen things um, when you were in school that, that really made you think you wanted something better for your, for your daughters? You know, when I was in school, there was, we had like a lot of, even back then, there were behaviors that was going on. There were bullying. Um, we had, or academically, you know, it wasn't the best. Um, I, I, so I remember particularly uh, elementary school where the building was, it was called Schumacher. Okay. I don't know if I should have said that name. Yeah, sure. Why not? But yeah, and, and it was a very old building. So what I understand is there was a time where maybe it was what they call the baby boomers. And so they built all these new houses. I mean, I'm sorry, schools, right? Yep, yep, time. yep. Kind of like they've so done they, in the past 20 years. And in, in in, here in L.A., they've built a ton of schools because they thought the population was going to go through the roof and then it just fell out. But anyway, go ahead. So they had, they had, right. they had too many schools. So they, yeah. They built a whole lot of schools during the baby boomer years. Yep. So... They just, but they never went back, never renovated anything. They just let these schools. So when I started coming along, these schools had holes in the walls, holes in the ceiling, leaking. We had used books. Um, we, I mean, everything was third hand, not right. even second hand, third right. hand. Um, and so that made it, you know, that just made it even worse as far as try, if you, if you weren't trying to be academically aware, you know, as a student, you definitely were in an environment like that. Yep. Yep. And were you aware at the time when you, like when you were a teenager, were you aware that there were better schools nearby or, or did it not really hit your, uh, hit your awareness? When I was a teenager, I'll tell you, um, I think I probably knew because we knew about private schools and private schools were supposed to be, you know, like better yeah. schools. Yeah. Um, you know, so I didn't, so I probably didn't like really zone in on it because I am, I was a teen, you know, yep. at the time. Yeah, sure. Um, but but I, I knew that they did have better schools because, you know, they always said private schools were, you know, like my neighbor. Like I would wonder, well, what, I had a set of twin friends um, and her, Tracy and Stacy. And I used to say, how come they don't go to school with me? Because they went to this private, elite, all-girls school or whatever, you know. And I was like, wow. Huh. You know, so that was, we knew, I knew then that was a better school. Yep. Or, or, or supposedly, you know. Yeah, supposedly a better school. Did, were you aware of, like, did, what, like is it Copley yeah. Fairlawn? Is that how you say the district that you that you got your, your daughters Copley into? Fairlawn. Were yeah. you aware of Copley Fairlawn when you were a kid or... Or districts like that, or no, they were they were kind of out on the perimeter, I guess, or out. Yeah, yeah. They were out on the perimeter. Didn't have didn't have any idea about those suburban schools. I really didn't. Yeah. 
Yep. So really, no idea. And and what kind? Of, where 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 are your parents from? Are they from Akron or no? My dad is from Akron. He was born and raised here. My mother, my mom is from North Carolina. Okay. Um, oh, that's that's so she spent spent time in North Carolina. Yeah. Yes. Yes. She's like a military uh, child. Oh, got so it. So she was all over the globe. So she went everywhere, you know. And so, but her base was Fort Bragg. It was North Carolina. So. Oh, got it. Got it. Um, and so, do you remember any differences, like um, in the schools, like in Akron versus the schools in North Carolina versus the schools in other places that you lived, or no? Absolutely. Yeah. The schools, the schools to me, okay. So the schools to me in the South were better. They were. Oh, they were. They were better. They were better to me. Uh huh. But on a grading scale, guess what? On a grading scale, they they were not. So like, so say. So say I got uh, a B yep. in ELA or science or whatever. Well, when I transferred my credits here to Ohio in the 10th grade, they knocked that grade down. They said the grading scale was different. Oh, really? Yeah. So, <laughs> and, and, and vice versa. So if I was there and I, if I was here and I got to say I got a, a B here, when I would get, when I would go to the school in the South, they would up it say, oh, well, actually it's an A. Yep. Isn't that weird? But, but reason why is odd, right? And so, but they, that's just the way they thought that they thought what they told me was the learning curriculums and the learning was yeah. a little slower yep. uh, in the South versus up North. Okay. But I like the South. I liked it because it was a more of a, uh, now, now the high school I went to, cause I, I went to high school uh, in North Carolina as well called, um, Westover. Okay. It's in Fayetteville, North Carolina. Wait, wait, so, where, where? I missed that. Which, which city? Fayetteville. Okay. Is it, is that a medium sized city? I haven't heard of that one. Or is it a smaller town? It's a smaller town, but it's absolutely growing because of Fort Bragg, because of, it's just always growing. You know, it's just always growing. So kind of a milita military town? Yes. It's yeah. The Army and, and maybe uh, Air Force is there too, or at least it used to be out Air, uh, 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 Pope, uh, Fort Pope, but I'm yep. not certain. If that's still there or not. Okay. But so, so like to me, that city, and mind you, it was people from all over the globe there. So it wasn't like, like Akron, where you kind of was when I was coming up. You had the population was really basic. Yep. You didn't have a whole. It wasn't broadened at all. But when you live on a military, when you live on, on a mil in a military town. Yep. You get. You get everyone from all over. It's very, very, ra very racially diverse. Um, probably very. lots of different perspectives. People from not just from right, not just from North Carolina, right? They're coming from all over the place. All yeah. over the globe. Yeah. So, and I still felt more of a a, a family type of um, uh, environment. Even hmm. the schools, like the food. Hmm. Oh my goodness! Let me get on the food. The food was so good. <laughs> Southern like, food. I remember it was homemade food, homemade biscuits, homemade you know mashed potatoes. Huh. We had we had stew. We had you know we we had roast. We had uh, we, home cooked pies, cookies. We had home cooked meals. Yeah. Where peach tower. Yeah. But um, whereas up here in Ohio, we would have things out of a bag. Hmm. So we would have a pizza and we have to pop the bag, bag open for the pizza. Yeah. We would have, you know, like everything was so manufactured here. So a process. Yeah. There it was not. And they, I think what it was, was they wanted the kids to really be comfortable in their learning environment. Mm -hmm. and, I, and now they didn't say this. It's just what I got because I felt like the kids there when we, when we, when we, when we were in our studies and we were in our classrooms, it was just a comfortable environment, and we were and, and, and they accepted us. And maybe because it was so many people from so many different backgrounds, but then even the cafeteria. I mean, like you walked up there, you had a whole tray, a big tray, mm -hmm. different compartments on the tray. Yeah. Um, you were dining. Yeah. For lunch, you were actually you had silverware. You had you had cups. You had. You, you, when you were finished, you would take the tray and you would put it in the dishwasher. Like it was really that kind of environment where, whereas in Ohio, everything was a, 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 a styrofoam plate, yeah, plastic spoons and forks and everything is thrown, tossed out. And, um, you know, it, it's just, it was just, it's just a different environment. Did, 
cold. Yeah, did the school, did the school in North Carolina, did it feel like it had more resources? Like it wasn't as, as, as kind of broken down? Like it, it felt, did it feel like a nicer school? I, yeah, it was a newer school, it was a nicer yeah. school, but, but remind, don't forget, this was a military. Yeah. So, so, so money, so it might, a, a, a city over could have been completely opposite. Completely poor, yeah. It's just yeah. that it was a military town, so the money that, they probably had money that maybe another city right next door did not. Well, there's also this, the military culture, right? The military culture brings something, right? It, it, it yeah. brings like a spirit of discipline or something. And Absolutely. Yeah, there's a, there's a certain, um, there's something really nice about those communities. Um, Great. So how did the, so I'm curious about the racial thing, right? So were, were the Akron schools that you grew up in, were they like really predominantly african-american or was there a pretty was there a mix of races in your schools in, in akron oh yeah it was predominantly the schools that i attended were predominantly black schools yep absolutely um until we moved and when we moved when we moved we moved to um an area where it was not and it was more of uh, where they bust a lot of the black kids okay to the, uh, when I was going to uh, a school called Bettis, okay, um, that school there to me was more diverse. Um, yeah, but it was it, I got a chance to you know learn how to be around different cultures, different people. Yeah, whereas when when I was really small and I was going to Schumacher or Stewart, those were predominantly black. I mean, all black. Yeah, ninety nine percent black. Yep, but, but not the teachers. Not the teachers. The te it was polar opposite. The teachers were ninety nine percent not black. Yeah. You know? Yeah. If, if that's a thing. <laughs> no, I believe it. I believe it. Do you, do you ever hear Malcolm Gladwell talks about this in one of his pod podcasts that when they when Brown v. Board of Education happened and they integrated the schools, there were all of these black teachers who lost their jobs because they were taking the black kids and integrating them into the into the white system. But, right. the, but the white system wouldn't hire the black teachers. And so you ended up mm -hmm. with losing all these great black teachers, you know, losing their jobs. Um, mm -hmm. I don't, it's not something I'm an expert on, but Malcolm Gladwell has talked about it a bit. And it sounds, I mean, it's been, it's been that way for a long time, right? A lot of the teachers in these schools are yeah. middle-class white ladies, right? Who are, yeah. who are sending their own kids to private schools. It's like, absolutely, ugh, yeah. Absolutely, it's, it's, it's right, the high schools, you know, I'm a paraprofessional yeah. for Akron, at a high school, and even at, right now, it's like that. It's predominantly white, but all the students- The, the kids, are, I mean, the, the teachers are predominantly white, yeah. Yes, yes, yeah. and so, you know, and I remember talking to a teacher years ago, uh, you know, I liked, I really liked her. She was a sweetheart, but I didn't understand why. Um, I, 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 I sat down with her and I said, you know, tell me why you live in a suburban area. So why do you drive? You know, this is Ohio. Yeah. Winter time, winter time. You yeah. On the highway, it's bad. Yeah. So I was like, why do you drive here to teach the inner city kids who are, you know, sometimes it's just hard to connect. You sure. Know? So, sure. 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 Um, she says, she said to me, there was no accountability. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't it something? And I said, well, what do you mean? There's I no account There was no accountability in your school where she was teaching. She wanted to be free from right. accountability. No That's way. Right. She said that she, she was bold. She wasn't that bold for her to tell me that she told me there was no accountability. Uh, and I said, well, uh, could you allow, I wanted her to elaborate. I was like, tell me more. What do you mean by that? She was like, I, what I'm talking to you about is if I worked, at the district I live at, yeah, I have to be accountable for everything. I, I mean, everything has to be. I have to cross my T's, dot my eyes. I have to make sure that I can. It, it, she said, if a parent called me at two o'clock in the morning, I have to get up and justify that grade I gave that student. All right. She said here. She said in the inner city, the parents are working two jobs. Maybe it's a one. It's a it's a one parent home. Or maybe the grandmother has the children. It's, it's a lot of different elements that go into that, and and so uh, she don't have to work as hard. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because the parents are too busy just trying to make it every day. Yep, yep. Isn't that something? It's crazy she said that out loud. It's crazy she, she said, said that, that out loud. loud. Yeah. Did, oh. your, did your parents both work when you were growing up? I, yes, they did. My, my dad had a business. Uh-huh. Uh, he, ha he had, uh, like, he did uh, custodial. He did window washing for the courthouses in Cleveland. Okay. Like, you know, those scaffolds to get out there on, and, and they yep. look like they're really up high. Oh, my he gosh. Hire men. 
I'm like, yeah. <laughs> That's not a job I'm ever going to do. <laughs> and do those bids. Yeah, he would bid, have bids on those certain jobs. And uh, and so he did all that exterminating. He did all those. So he had, so he had a bunch of employees and was doing um, things. Yeah. yeah, that's awesome. So he was kind yeah. of an entrepreneurial, self-starting guy. He, yeah, absolutely. He was not. When I was really young, of course, you know, this is the this is the tire place. So my dad worked at Goodyear and my grandfather worked at Goodyear. And, uh-huh. You know, that's because, you know, Goodyear is our um, our Goodyear is uh, the corporation this year. The head, the head. Oh, it is. Oh, OK. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. Cool. Cool. And what did your mom do? So my mom worked at, when I was really young, she worked with kind of like me. And that's probably where I got this from. Yeah. She worked with young young teens, young children uh, who were MRDD, mentally challenged. Okay. You know, Asperger's, Down syndrome. Yep. Uh, uh, you know, so she worked with that population of kids. So she used to take me every Sunday. She would do my hair. And that Monday morning, when I was really small, you could take, back then, you could take your kids to work with you. Right. So, so she used to take me to the school with her, and I would play with the kids. They were adults, but of course, you know, their mindset was um, very young. They were adults? So I, they were they were adults. Is that what you said? A lot of them were oh, adults, yeah. huh. but, but, but since they were mentally, since, you know, sure. they had Down syndrome, a lot, of, a lot of them was a mind of a two-year-old. Right. And, and what, so yeah, was, it a, was it a public school, or was it like a private institution? It was a private. It was called Weaver, and it huh. was private. Huh. Yeah. Very cool. Interesting. Yeah, Yeah, you know, it's fascinating. I've been thinking about this. So my wife works at a hospital and she works with cancer patients. And I've been Mm. thinking about how our kids, our kids never get to see my wife working, right? Mm. Because they can't go to the hospital that, you know, they're not allowed in there. Right. And and I've never, I've never seen Simone work. I've never seen her be with a patient. Like she's working with cancer patients, these very ill people in some of the worst times of their lives, like an incredibly difficult job. And it's just like completely hidden from view. Like your mom's work was like right there for you. You were able to see her interacting with these really difficult people, right? And like yeah. how she kept her composure. And I'm sure she was a role model for you. And I've, we've been thinking about how do we get our kids to be able to see Simone doing her work? Um, because it's just yeah. kind of, it, it doesn't happen anymore. Um, it doesn't. And it's a shame because because r- shortly after that, they stop having parents. Maybe once a year. Yeah. At, at our area, you might have a parent, daughter, or parent, yep. you know, child go to work with your mom or go to work with their dad. Yeah. You know, because as I got older, um, I wasn't able to go with my mom. My mom, so so that's what she did when I was young. Yeah. But then, like, when I became a teenager, she worked with juvenile delinquents, where those are where uh, they are sentenced by the juvie court system mm-hmm. in Cleveland to go and maybe they, you know, got into mischief and they maybe, you know, stole something, just get into all kind of trouble. And so they would have to go and stay at uh, this this facility type of place yep. for six months, maybe a year. Okay. And so my mother worked there. She worked uh, directly, uh, direct care with those teens who had those kind of, uh, uh, you know, behaviors or sentencing. So, um, and, and by that point, like you said, so by that point. They um, wouldn't let you I go. Never, yeah. No. Well, it's amazing she was able to take you originally. I mean, I mean, if especially if not, if all those people had mental mental health problems, right? The idea that you would take your daughter, it's I mean, it's kind of amazing. It was a different era, right? It was a different era. Yeah, um, we're we're kind of hyper concerned with safety these days. Um, so so what was the so you said the 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 schools in North Carolina, like that you went to the public schools were they all military families or did you were there other other families mixed in there as well? It was definitely a mixture, but it was, but, but. Heavily military. Heavily. Because, yeah. Heavily because, because even, even our area where we live, we live in this area called Cotton Aid on York Street. I mean, every other house, they were all military. Was military, yeah. Come in, come out, come in, come out constantly. So yeah, it was, it was a lot. If I was to look at the percentage, I, I would say it was, I would say it was. 75 percent yeah really but your family wasn't your family wasn't military at that point right your mom you said your mom was a military brat but she was your neither of your parents were in the military at that point or were no, they no my parents were not no okay. my parents were not in the military but when i live with you know of course like when i live with my grandmother oh you live with your grandmother still, got it yeah so we still would get all the the perks of being you know we would go on the base and we would do different things and uh, we could, I mean, that base is huge. You go horseback riding on base, huh. you know, skate, ice skating on base, roller huh. skating on base, yep. basketball on base. You go to the um, 
what is that called? The, the food where you go to eat. Uh, uh, did you go to buy food? The, oh, PX, the commissary PX, or something, PX, or oh, the, the commissary. commissary. Yeah, yeah, whatever. Yeah. So, and so yeah, so my grand yeah, I just spoke, so my grandfather was uh, military. Uh, he was a he retired uh, army. Uh, he was in the war, you know, and so you know just but yeah, it was a which lot. which war so, which war was he in? Which I don't remember that. Lord. We were Korean War maybe. Go, my mother lived in, in Busan, France. Okay. She was little. Oh. So he was. I know he was over there fighting because my mother lived in Busan, France. Oh, so may, maybe like, maybe World War Two. I mean, my grandfather. My I think yeah, you and I are about the same age, and my grandfather fought in World War Two, so it could be World War Two. <laughs> yeah. Then that's what it was. Yeah. That's what it was. Yeah. Absolutely. Amazing, huh? Uh, but no, he was injured though. He was injured. Yeah, he would. Oh, he, oh my goodness. Let me tell you something. So he was injured. He ended up getting post traumatic stress. So I remember like sleeping in a bed with my grandma, and grandpa, and I remember him like yelling in the middle of the night. And and I'm like, grandma, oh, what's wrong? whoa, yeah. And she would say, she, you know, you know, she's southern, that southern accent. So she would say, war, baby. That was the war, baby. <laughs> you know. I was like, okay. And, and and my grandfather was a very, very fair-skinned man. Uh -huh. So. When he would walk around without his shirt, he had bullets still in his spine. No way. And you could see the bullets. You could see the bullets that he took out of his leg. Yep. And uh, but you could see the ones that is, is stuck out of his back a little yep. bit, like two inches, because they couldn't, they wouldn't take it out because they thought uh, if they did, it could, you know, paralyze them. Yep. He must have been an intimidating. I don't know. It sounds like if I was a little kid, I'd be intimidated by a guy like that. Were you intimidated by him or was he kind of a warm, uh, I don't know, or maybe a little bit of both? <laughs> he was, he was, he was warm. Like he was, he was, he was mushy. He, 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 he became, he became, what happened was with the post-traumatic stress, he did drink a lot. Uh, and so drinking, you know, that causes other things. Cause I think that was the, his coping mechanism. Yep. A vodka. I remember him buying this huge thing of vodka and my grandmother would get so upset because she was a Christian lady. Uh, she didn't believe in, she didn't believe in, uh, you know, that. And, and, uh, she was the type of person with the church all the time. Yep. Uh, you know, during the week and during the Sunday, we were in church all day when we lived with her. It was, yeah. it was, it was a mess, but I mean, not a mess, but I, we fought it. Me and my brother, cause it was just me and him. We fought it. I was like, I gotta go to church. Yeah, we just went <laughs> all day. Yeah, exactly. It's like my kids. <laughs> Um, yeah, do we have to go to church? Do we have to go to church? Yeah, we got to go yeah. to church. Um, really interesting. Um, so, um, so then why did you move back to Akron? Why did you come back to Akron? Okay. So what happened was my mom. Okay. So how we ended up in North, this is, this is, this is a story here. Yeah. So when I was, when we were real young, you know, my mom, dad, me and my brother, we all lived together, but my mom and dad would have fat issues you know where they sure. would get into it sure. and so my mom would leave my mom would leave my dad and she would go back home uh -huh. and then we and then, so that's how i ended up going to different cities it wasn't that we weren't in the military just ended up in a military town yeah but but the, but that's how i ended up going to north carolina as many times as we did back and forth as the years went by yep um because mom and dad would have their issues with each other and arguments, fighting and stuff. And my mom would say, I'm leaving you. Yep. And then my dad was, you know, my dad would say, no. And so he would, <laughs> he would follow her. And this was, this, this was like, this was like automatic. He would follow her to North Carolina and then she would forgive him. And then she'd go back, and then start all over again. And, you know, cause they really didn't love each other. It was a true love story, honestly. Yep. Um, but my, my father was extremely, um, he was just like a jealous guy, you know, like he was really a jealous guy. Yeah, jealous, so, jealousy can be a problem. Jealousy can be a problem, it can, yeah. It can be a big But that's how, I mean, it seems like a lot of passionate love affairs are that way. Like they kind of go, you know, like they're, you're, you're attracted and then you're repelled and you're kind of coming, going back and forth, yeah. Yes, and that's what happened with them all the time. Yep, so eventually you moved back, yeah. And in 10th grade, I moved back. And I, and, uh, well, in the 10th grade, so my 11th and 12th grade year was in Akron. So that's how I was able to experience uh, high school uh, in North Carolina versus this high school uh, here. Yeah. And, and that was another issue. I, I So if we just say, if we just talk about, you know, people wanted to fight me on, on, on what I did, but I felt being stationary for my kids was very important mm. because of, me and my brother moving to North Carolina, moving to East Point, Atlanta. One time we drove to Sacramento three days. It took us three days to get out there. 
and and so those uh impact me and my brother a lot and so we so i was like i don't want to just bounce my kids all around i don't yeah. want them. so so when i had them out there in cop week i, I wanted to I don't know. I was just adamant about them staying stationary because I knew how hard it was mm-hmm. yep. to be in different schools and, and and to get acclimated and to be and, and to build friendships and to build you know build into the community that you're at. It's it, it could bring a lot of strain. Even though they say kids are resilient, and kids can bounce back, and you can move them all around. Sure, you you probably you can, but but it's not ideal. It's not ideal. It's not perfect. And so yeah. I was very. I was very, um, you know, it was it was hard for me. It was hard yeah. for me. Yeah, yeah. No, I get it. I get it. Um, so, what did you what did you want to do? I want to come back to I want to come back to that story. What did, what did you want to do when you were in high school? Like, what did you want to? Did you want to be a teacher? Did you want to work with, um, um, you know, the mentally ill? Like, or did you have any idea? I I I don't I can't really remember exactly what I wanted to do. Oh, I wanted to save the world. I'm yeah. <laughs> I thought I was, I'm going to tell you, I thought I was going to save the world. Yep. But but of course, I want to do what my mom did. Yep. My mom was my idol. My mom is my idol now. Mm-hmm. And like, I, I just That's Google awesome. my mother. Yeah. Always. Okay. But, 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 but realistically, let me tell you, you're not going to believe this. Mm-hmm. So one day I go to, uh, we have a, you know, we have a, a children's hospital uh, uh, here. So I had an opportunity to go and get a, um, to, uh, I went into the records department for an interview. So the lady was talking to me. She was like, what do you want to do? You know, when you, when you, I was like, maybe I was very young. Had to be 16, 17. I'm trying to get a job at the children's hospital. Uh, because I mean, at, back then any, any hospital was great. Right. Sure. So, you know, and, and it was like, you know, the hours, everything was perfect. So I'm interviewing with this lady. You're not going to believe this. Uh-huh. She, she asked me, she says, what do you want to do? What do you want to do? I said, I want my own school. Oh, really? <laughs> and she said, she, but that, but that blew out, that blew out the opportunity. She was like, Mac, because more likely someone, the next person probably came in and said, I want to further my knowledge of this. Okay. Or I, w- I want to be a doctor or something. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, so that that messed up my whole chance. But I didn't know I was young. I but you had it in your head that you had it in your head that you wanted to do something related to school. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. I wanted. Yeah. Do, yeah. I wanted, I wanted my own school. Yep. I mean the irony of it all. So so with that being said, you know, then years later, all this stuff happening, and then but but before all that happened, when I was like in my twenties, I got married, and I he worked year round. So I thought, okay, so I'm going to create my own daycare center. Okay. So I created so I created a daycare center. Oh, cool. The daycare center was called. I guess it was called the Academy of Early Learning. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> I love that name. I still love that name. So I had it was the LLC. It's a great name. It. Yep. Yeah, I thought it was. I thought it was so cool. The Academy of Early Learning. So I had all the preschoolers. I had little ones. I had. I had. I had, like one because they had to walk. I had like twelve months up to preschoolers you yeah know? and in and, and some school and some of them had like older siblings so i would go ahead and take those yep, yep, kids yep. you know yeah you after know, school or yeah. something yeah yeah yes was it and so was that in downtown akron or somewhere it was where you lived in that akron was, it was in akron it was on copley road i had it at uh, united baptist church with oh so it wasn't it wasn't in your school you had a you had a separate space for it yes i did it at oh, cool. church that's awesome yeah how many kids so did you I, have I total was, do you remember I had like twelve. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm a yeah. huge fan. We we use daycare for all of our kids, and just became, you know, uh, Betty, the woman who runs our daycare, she just became such a close family friend, right? Because you're you're, uh-huh. you're with that family, right? It was, I mean, when it was, it was, it was in her house, right? You're with that family over, you know. Well, so far we've been with her eight years, and we're probably going to be with her another eight years. You know, you get yeah. you just get to know these people so well. Um, yeah, and it's so important. I think I, I don't know. I just think those those daycare centers are a real opportunity, right? To, to for the they kids are, to experience really kind are. of a preschool environment, and yeah, mm-hmm. to be around people who love them and who are you know kind of protecting them. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. How long did you run the daycare? I had the daycare for about five years. Yeah. For a while. Yeah. yeah. And what ha- so what happened was I had the daycare. Um, they, they wanted to renovate. So they end up renovating the daycare. Yep. Once, uh, so I had to move. Yep. So I moved the daycare to the YWCA. Okay. Uh, and, and I stayed there for a while. And then, um, then, 
yeah, so so it was like a total of five years, and then I just kind of like we, weaned it out. Yeah. And I just, it's, I, you know, I was having problems with my ex husband. Yeah. Was, he was did you have your daughters by this time? I did. Oh, you did. Okay. Okay. So you were taking yeah. care of them partially. Yeah. 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 And that was a convenient thing. I could take them with me. Yep. Yep. You know? And so, so did so did your daughters go to Akron Public Schools for elementary and middle school then? They did. Yeah, they did. And how did you feel about that? Like, what was what was the experience in the Akron Public Schools? I did not like it. You did so, not like it. So, so what happened was, you now my daughters are four, almost five years apart. Yep. Right? Yep. So, so, what I did was, before I had my second daughter, I was able to concentrate on my first one. So she got ready. So when she, I remember her kindergarten year, I just had Jada, the yep. second one. But I put her, I put her in a private St. Mary. You heard of St. You heard of St. V with LeBron James? Yeah. Okay, so this was the this was the the elementary part of it. Okay. So I had her there. It was a was it a cat was it a Catholic school? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yep. I had her th there. She stayed there her first year, her second year, and then after that. Um, and then after that, I had to I had to pull her out because we couldn't the money you know we couldn't keep it up. Yeah. So I had to put her in the public schools. And then when I put her in the public schools, it was oh, I I, I did not like it. From the from like the it. very beginning, you didn't like it. I did not like it from the very beginning, and I remember you know, but I was still married. Yeah. So me and my ex husband were still making our way. We're still doing what we need to do. And then one day, uh, when I did uh, get a divorce, now mind you, by then my little one. She couldn't have been no more. She was still pretty young, but she had to be like four. Okay. She was still pretty young. Yep. So I had her at four years. I had her, and she. So now I had her, and I had my other. And I had my yeah, other yeah. eight one. eight year old and a four year old or so, right? Four yeah. year old. And so my dad was like, um, now by that point I had left my ex husband. Yep. So I'm living alone, and I moved in with my parents and my dad, and then I ended up moving, finding me a place, moved in by myself. With my girls and my dad kept telling me, just bring them here, just bring them here, you know, bring them out here. And so one day, I oh, so even when even 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 when they were in elementary school, he was saying that. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yep. Absolutely, he was saying he said it for like two or three years, and I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't yep. do it. I wouldn't do it. Yep. And then, and then finally, I said, okay, I'll do it. And so, it, I want to say it was that spring, that spring I went out there, looked at the school. How how old were um, you? How old were your kids at that time? Jada, my little one had to be like third grade. Okay. And so that means that my oldest one, she was like in sixth grade, mm -hmm. maybe going into middle school. Okay. We had middle school. I don't know if everybody has, we have middle school here. Yep. So she was going into middle school. So they went out there for two years. And then after that, uh, with the chaos that all, all of that happened, then I brought them back. And what people don't understand, it was so weird because people didn't understand, like, my kids were back in Akron when that, all that stuff hit the fan. Yeah, exactly. They had, they had been back in Akron, but the scrutiny that they faced, my mm -hmm. my daughter's face, it was like nobody's thinking. These kids been here, mm -hmm. right? So, you know, like think about it, you guys. This was a couple of years ago. This was like, this they I prosecuted know. us almost two years later. Two years they, later, exactly. So they they were long gone from the Copley Fairlawn mm -hmm. schools. Yeah. yeah. Wait. So your kids? I didn't know this. Your so your kids went there for elementary and middle school, not for high school. Yes. For some reason, I had in my no. head that they went there for high school. No. They went there and no, they no. were really young, really little. So so oh my gosh. So that that puts a very different cast on it. So the district hired a private eye to follow your daughters, who were basically they weren't even teenagers yeah. yet. They were no, they were no, little girls. No. They were little girls. Mm. Yeah, That's they, and they horrible. Were, they were very mean to my daughters. My oldest one especially. She told me that a random teacher who did not know her yeah. had walked up to her. Did we tell did I tell you about no, that? No, I don't think you did, no. So she's at her locker getting yep. her books and, and the random mm -hmm. teacher just walked up to her, basically telling her to get out. Mm -hmm. Like what? Right. Who does that to a child? Was this before? This was uh, this was before the all the indictments mm -hmm. and stuff because this she was before. Oh yeah. wow! So 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 your daughters had come under some scrutiny, like they had like they were getting some harassment from folks even before this school, all came down. Yeah, that's right. Yes. Oh yeah, because again, when I when I re-enrolled them back into Akron schools, 
and they have been there. They have been there for two years. Yeah. yeah 18 months, 18, 18 months, months. Yep. 18. a year and a half. So, yeah. so I want to back up. So your dad, your dad by that time had a, a house out in Cop, Copley Fairlawn is, the, or he had it in Copley or Fairlawn or whatever. Are those two, two towns? Mm -hmm. Yes, Copley Fairline is one. I know it sounds strange, right? Yeah. It's one. Oh, it's Copley one. Fairline is one. Got it. And so he had he had a house out there. He owned the house out there, and yes. was it predominantly a white neighborhood? Like, is that mm -hmm. is the or yeah? What 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 was the what 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 was Cap Copley Fairline like? Why why did he move out there? It's predominantly a white school, yeah a uh, white a uh, white district yeah. Um, so what happened was my father was doing good. He was thriving with his business. Yeah. And he was looking for, he was looking to move and he was looking for land and they had a nice uh, area of land. Like it was a whole block yep. and it was for sale. Huh. So, so my mom, my mom, they, they get the number, they find it, they get the land, they buy the land. They, they go find a, um, a colonial style mm -hmm. home. Okay. I didn't. No. no. Okay. So, so okay. What was block. it? I'm sorry. What was it? No, it was, a, it was the end of a block. It, it was, was at the end of the block. block. Yeah. It was at the end of the block. Sorry. No worries. No worries. <laughs> end of the block. And but I, I I'm getting two for I'm getting two for one here. I get uh, yeah. <laughs> the memory, your memories and your mom's memories. Go ahead. A big, a big area. I think it was um, more than an acre. So, am I wrong? Forget. It was an acre. Though. It was like an acre. acre oh, so it was a lot of land. It was a lot of land. Was it like a big empty lot or was it? Yeah, it was just wood. It was wooded up, like all huh. wood, super tall, tall trees. They had to get, they had to go in and get, you know, lumber and get everything flattened. And, yep. and, and, and they had to get, the, you know, then they, they found this mm -hmm. style home, which they wanted colonial. They got the colonial style home, had it built. And so they had been out there maybe oh, so they, about. They built that house. They built yeah. that house. Oh my goodness! Yeah, yeah. They own that, and they own the. Uh, it was land on the side, so we paid taxes on the side too. We yep. own it. We were buying it. Okay, buying it, mom. To but me, when, when you buy a house, to me, you your owner. Yeah, but they want to be so you know. Particular. So you know, the thing of it is, Kim, is that we were scrutinized so much for any yeah. mistake. If I said anything, yeah. so what I. That's why she's she's my mom gets so worried. Yeah. That when I go to talk and talk about my story, she mm -hmm. wants to be so correct. Yeah. Because we were so scrutinized. Because they called you liar. Because they yeah. always talk. Because anything I did, they would take and twist it and and tell me you look at liar. her, she's a liar. So what? and it's like, no, I'm not lying. I'm trying to tell you. The trying truth. to tell so the story lying. exactly. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Exactly. So that's why she said, not the whole block. Don't say yeah. the whole block. It was. Yeah. I mean, or that corner. She said, don't say the whole corner. You know. Yeah, but it was a big. It was a big piece of land. It was a big piece of land. It was a big piece of and, land. And, and, and did your did your family did you ever you didn't ever live there you didn't ever um, because you were grown. I, no, yeah. I, I did live. There you lived there for a bit. For a while, cause yeah. Once I got once I left my ex husband. Yep. Me and my daughters by that point and bringing in two more. Yeah. <laughs> so so I so we moved back home with my mom yeah. and my dad. Oh great! And did did you did you guys ever receive any harassment just about living there? Like, did, did, did anybody say, oh, you don't belong here? Did you feel, feel any, like, racial animosity just from living in the town? Or did that just come later with the, with the no, school stuff? From white people. No. So what happened was, it was, it's funny you asked me that. So mm -hmm. one time we received a postcard uh, from, the, from the school, like, like an invitation. Okay. And, and, and that was used in court. So, because it was like, well, what was this invitation for? Oh, this was an invitation to like send kids to there. Say, yeah. Yeah. Check out, yeah. Check out our school. Bring them out. You know, come on out. See what we're about. We're having a meeting tonight. And so, oh. we, you know, we went. And so that's what, so we used that in court. So we was like, wait a minute. You guys asked us to, you know, all Right. Oh, you did. Out. Oh, that's clever of your lawyer. That's good. That's good. But you didn't, you didn't feel any, um, like your parents didn't feel any animosity from the neighbors or anything. Because it was predominantly white, or not, or not really, not. No, but but the I, the funny part was, on that street. Uh huh. And only that really, that only really that street, because like I said, that that city was predominantly white city uh, yep. town. Yep. So, but on that street, across the street from my mom, with three houses across and and to the side, they were they were black. Her neighbors, but then, but then everyone else was white. But that, okay. that what I, but I say that to say, that was kind of abnormal that they had on a, and it was a cul-de-sac. It was like a dead end. Yep. 
So, and, and but but and they had quite a few houses there, you know, maybe about thirty houses, twenty five, thirty houses on that street. Got it. So, but out of all those houses, it was like a total of four houses on the street that were black. That's oh, a great! Lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In, in a township like that. Yeah. Like, to me, that's a lot. That's unusual, right? For you know, in certain no town, in certain towns in the Midwest, I grew up in the Midwest. In certain towns in the Midwest, that's pretty unusual. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Part, yeah. We were just on that street. Yeah, we were just on that street. Yeah, but you didn't you didn't feel any animosity then. It 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 uh, until the school thing happened, everything until was until the school. Yeah. So I know that I I don't believe that like it was our neighbors that told. They did, what would they get out of that? Like, so I don't believe it was our neighbors that told. I mean, we to this day we really don't know how. Well, I mean, yeah, exactly. I mean, they just, they could have they could have just decided, oh, we we're not sure about these people. We're gonna we're gonna we have this private eye. We're gonna set this private eye on them. You know, I mean, they, they usually, easy. yeah, they it, yeah, exactly. And the kids didn't look like the rest of the kids in the school, right? Um, it's you can imagine that that sometimes gets used. Um, Absolutely, it's horrible. Um, what? Um, so tell me more about what you didn't like about the Akron schools. Like, what were you seeing in the Akron schools? Was it was it worse than when you were there? What you were seeing your daughters go through, or do you, or were you just seeing it through new eyes, saying, "Oh, I went through this. This is not a great situation for my daughters. I want something better for them." Like, what what did you see in those years that your daughters were in the Akron public schools before you made the choice? I think what I noticed more, and I, and I didn't even compare it to when I was there. Yeah. I, I didn't. I didn't. I just, I was living in the current moment. I, didn't, I don't think I really compared it to when I was there. But what I did not like was I didn't like the system. I didn't like, uh, you know, if you want to, you know, I didn't know back then teachers get graded too. Right. And But if I could have graded them, they definitely were not passing. They weren't like good they teachers. They definitely were D teachers. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? They were D teachers, C teachers. They were not. They were not teachers that really were looking out for the student's best interest. Well, then, yeah, so let's talk about this moment, right? This, I mean, this is kind of an extraordinary moment. Your dad, he's been pushing you for several years, a couple years, right? Like, bring your daughters out here and just enroll them in the schools out here. Um, and you said you, you, it was about 10 minutes away from your house. It was pretty close, wasn't it? Um, yeah. Yeah. We both lived off of a main street called Copley, yep. right? So, but I was just in the inner city, and, and he was just Copley. Yep. And so, and so he, what did he say? What do you, he, he brought it up, and you resisted it a little bit. Like, um, he just said, bring him out here. We'll use my address. Was there any, I'm just, it's a brave thing for your dad to do. Like, I really admire your dad for sort of, you know, being engaged with his, his granddaughter's <laughs> education, right? And he's, like, taking, like, you know, he's, he's taking a risk, and he, but he's trying to do what's right. And, I mean, it's, let's face it, like, thousands and thousands and thousands of parents do this every year in this country um it, but you know what what do you think um did he just want to did he want to spend more time with them or did he feel like they weren't getting what they needed in akron or was he just hearing it from you what, what do you think he was thinking he absolutely knew that they weren't getting i, I don't know what I, i'm sure I, you know, this was a little while ago but i'm sure i was fussing and complaining and you yeah. know saying what, what what i felt was not in act adequate for for my daughters and 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 then I was also in school and, and and I was in college and I was you know of course I was newly divorced so I, you yeah know, you were about you were you were bound you had a lot going on right then you had a I lot had a going lot on, on. yeah so he wanted to help me he wanted to help me achieve what I needed to achieve yeah and he had just he, he was he had just gotten himself back together because he had you know had a little these like mini strokes okay yeah from the stress of his business yeah so, but but he was able to handle like my daughters. You know, he could handle them. So it wasn't you know nothing major. So he was um, he. So he was. You said he was help. He was helping with childcare even w with your daughters even before you started taking the kids out there for school. Is that right? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. They would help me. Yeah, my parents would pick up my kids for me if I needed them to. Yep. Um, you know, whatever they needed, they would they would always help me. My it's such a blessing. Oh my gosh, to have parents. I wish my I yeah. wish so much my parents lived in town. Um, it's such a blessing. Yeah. It is. For the day that they were born, my parents helped me with my with my daughters. My dad did what he could. My mom did her part. Yep. What she could. And so he just kept telling me, you know, Kelly, just bring him out here. I, you know, I've got this house out here. I mean, he had a, it was a beautiful home. It was yep. like four or five bedrooms. What I'm just saying is that everybody had their own room. If yep. they needed to, you know, just it was just my mom and my dad. Yeah, so, so yeah, they had more space. It. Yeah. Right. My dad said it. He said, I found this house. I built this house 
on the strength of if my children ever need to come back, yeah. they will have somewhere to come. Yep. So that was his biggest, that was one of his biggest deals that I want this established house where if anything ever happened to me uh, or, or, you know, if they need to come back, that they can come back. So, so it wasn't like, it, it wasn't like it was just, it, yeah, uh, I'll tell you. It wasn't like it was just a small uh, little apartment. Yeah, it was, was meant, it was meant to be for you and your daughters and, and presumably your brother as well. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, yeah. so. Um, and so, so do you remember enrolling your kids in the school? Do you remember how that went? Like, did, did you, like, did you have to go to the school and, and, and were you nervous at all? Were you nervous at all? I was, I was real nervous. Yeah. So I, I remember, <laughs> I remember my daughter, my youngest daughter's school, uh, much better than I do the middle school. I don't, I don't know why I really, it's like a fog for the middle school. It's yep. really foggy. But the but the but the, uh, the elementary school you remember the yeah. elementary school uh, I definitely remember because because when I walked into the office the principal asked me he said you want me to show you around yeah show you all the things you have and I was like yeah absolutely yeah so so he showed me around and he showed he he they had a, back then that was big stuff he had he took me into his room and it was a it was an IT room a computer room yeah and they had all the fixes of a of a I mean it was just like. I was like, wow. Yeah, re like, really, really different than the Akron schools that, that your daughter yes, was in before that. Yes. Yeah. Because they had a science area where it was just, see, see, in the inner city, you have a, you, you get a styrofoam cup. Yeah. You put dirt in it. You put a seed in it. You yeah. put water in it and you put it by the, and you put it by the window sill. Yeah. And you let it grow. <laughs> right? Yeah. But there, they had a whole, they had acres of land. Yeah. And they had a massive greenhouse. Yep. Who, who wouldn't be impressed with that? Yep, yep. So so here I am walking around, and I think they spoke, and then they had a French class, and they had a German class, and a, I mean, a rest, you know, speak. I was like, what? Yeah. Yeah, I want my daughter here. Of course. You know, I want her here because this is, this is all the bells and whistles. Yeah. Then, once they got there, Mom, can you close the uh, blinds mm -hmm. for me, please? Yeah. I know you. Um, the light was hitting me in my eye. Then, gosh, uh, oh, see, I lost Take your time. Take your time. Take your time. You said you saw the, the greenhouse and the, yeah, you, yeah. Yes, I saw the greenhouse and it was just, cool. they just had a lot of things that was really awesome for the kids. Yep. And I was like, I was like, this is what, and they were, this is what I, and they were pretty welcoming at that point, right? Like, and they were welcoming. Yes, absolutely. Yep. Yep. Um, so he didn't give any signs of being skeptical of you or double checking your right app. Not right then. Yeah, exactly. No. Um, well, I mean, he, honestly, he may have been perfectly happy to have you there, right? Like, like it, it, it I mean, it, it could have taken, there. it could have taken an administrator or a teacher, you know, who knows how it all played out, right? Um, yeah. He, he himself may have been very happy or maybe not. He, maybe he was thinking all the time, I'm going to double check on this person. So, yeah. so, um, so you move the kids and then, um, and they so did you did you drive the kids over there all, every day or did you like were they and then you and then they went to your your parents house after after school or how did it work sometimes you would sometimes you would but this the sometimes i would uh okay so this is the this is the deal there were me a couple other parents mm -hmm. this was like an underground railroad type of thing seriously we switched off okay. our kids. Oh, so there were so there were other folks doing this. Yeah. Oh my gosh, I don't think I knew that. And you knew who they were. Oh yeah, yeah, because we were all parents, and we just you know. And were they? Were you the, my, yeah. In Akron, what we would do is in the morning, I yep. would go get her kids. Her kids lived a couple yeah. streets over. Vice versa, she would come get mine. So we would switch off. I just we love how resourceful kids. you guys were. Like, like you're yeah. trying to do what's right for your kids, and you're just you're you're yeah. doing what you have to do, and you're sharing responsibilities, and you, you know, know were they? Right. Were, and I never go ahead. Well, I'm just saying, you know, like I know they were so worried. Yeah. That I was going to tell, and I never told because that's just I would never ever. I, I I knew they were under pressure. I knew they thought, oh my gosh, she's going to tell. Yeah. She's going to tell. And I never told. Good for you. Good for you. I just kept yep. it. Yeah, I just kept it. So what we did was, because what happened was her people also lived on my street. Okay. That was the people across the street. Got it. So we would take our kids to the bus stop. Yep. 
And we were, and but it was just not us. It was other people with cars sitting near the bus stop as well. So, so to me, that would not have been a red flag. Ah, uh, got it. Because there are parents that go to bus stops with their car because once the kids are on the bus, maybe they're going off work, maybe they're going to the grocery store, sure, whatever. So, sure, it's cold outside, whatever, and you, you got your your child is in your car warm because it's cold out. Yeah. So to me, that would not have been a red flag. So you know, I don't, I don't know, but all I know is they, you know. They hired the, the private eye. He started following me around. Oh, my goodness. Um, so, um, and did you know those families before before you got your, your girls into those schools? Or did you meet them after? You, you kinda, after. You probably, your, your dad and mom were probably talking to those neighbors, and you realized, oh, we, we're all doing this. I mean, what's amazing yeah. is that all those families, all those families with houses on that block, right, they were mm-hmm. paying the property taxes, right? They, they were paying for those schools, right? And yet they're mm-hmm. told, oh, you can't, you can't use them, right? You can't use them. Um, because, um, anyway, it's just, it's, it's, it, it no, just seems, right. it seems you're ludicrous. Right. It seems ludicrous. I mean, your dad, your dad built a house, right? Yeah. Like th- that property probably wasn't worth anything. They, the, the, the city wasn't getting any property taxes from that. He builds the house. The, the, the city is benefiting economically from his entrepreneurialism, his, you know, kind of Absolutely. get up and go, his willingness to go build a house in their city. And, and then, and then they're, then they're sicking a private eye on yeah. his daughter, right? And not only his daughter, but on his granddaughters, right? Who are just kids. Yeah. It's like, it's really distasteful, you know, it's just really yeah. unjust. Absolutely. It's just not right. It's just yeah. not right. Yeah. It wasn't right. The whole thing was disgusting. It was distasteful. I couldn't believe it. Frightening. I was. It was frightening. It yeah. Was frightening. It was back in the 1800s. It was, it was. Oh, it was so frightening that oh my God. when when like people like Reverend Al Sharpton or Jesse Jackson when they contacted me, what scared me even more is that I really truly thought I was back in the 60s because immediately they start telling us, "Don't talk on the phone. Right. The phone is tapped." Oh, jeez. I'm like tapped. Like they were telling us things that you would tell back in the day with right. with with in the '60s and stuff that was going on back then. Yep. And that just that petrified me, because I'm like, what, what, you know? So now what? You know, like what? They got people listening to you guys. It's tapped and da da da. Yeah. Like, oh. well, what, who knows if they were? Who knows if they were? I mean, there was a criminal. I mean, I suppose they could have. I mean, there was a criminal investigation going on. <laughs> So, so, well, t- tell me, before we get to the investigation, tell, tell me about how your daughters... I'm sorry, could you say that again? Yeah, tell me how your daughters did at the school, right? Like, I'm, before we get to the investigation, I'd love to hear, like, how, how, what did you see from your daughters, like, going to those, those different schools, and what, what, was the, what was your experience of the teachers in those schools, and, 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 and their, yeah, how are they doing? How are they doing in, the, in, in those copley Fairland schools? They excel. They yeah. excelled. They did really well. Yeah. They wanted to be okay. So you, so the thing of it is, is when you are in a learning environment like that, and your peers are doing well, they're striving, yep. they're doing good, that pushes you. Yep. No. So so now you got so now you got uh, my oldest daughter. I do remember this. Her friend, one of her closest friends, mm-hmm. her dad was an ambassador of Egypt. Yeah. That's big stuff. Yep. To where we come from. Yeah. So, sure. So That's big stuff anywhere. I don't I don't know any ambassadors. <laughs> you, right. You okay. So like like that was big stuff. So so my daughters wanted to achieve more. Yeah. My youngest daughter, I'm going to be a doctor. Yeah. You know, like she didn't do it, but she but she but sure. it was in her mind when she was little. Sure. It planted a seed of greatness yeah. within them. But prior to that, they weren't talking like that. Yeah. Because it because so you you so this is this is important. So, so they were at that school. They learned. They wanted to learn. They wanted to excel. They were pushing themselves to be better and better and better until, of course, the teachers and stuff started hack- messing with them and saying different things. And, of course, that, that changed the whole dynamic. But now, when time goes by and I remove the student, my daughters out of the school, now, if you, if, since you asked me that, I'm going to tell you. Sure. They saw the true difference. Yeah. Because now they're back in the inner city schools. At least my, 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 my oldest daughter was. I'll tell you about my youngest one. She didn't go back to the inner city school. Okay, okay. Uh, she, she, someone, uh, an, an anonymous professional sports man, who, for a team owner, contacted me. So I'm going to tell you about her in a minute. Okay. I'll tell you about her in a minute. So, so, but my youngest, but my oldest one, she went back to the school I worked at. Yeah. And she was like, Mom, this, the kids, the bell rings, the kids are still sitting on, on the desk. 
yep. on tables. They're throwing paper. They're throwing pencils. They got spitballs, all kind of stuff. Just paper towels. It's just stuff. Just it's chaos. Yep. The teacher can't get them settled for 20 minutes. Now, it's a it's a it's a 60 minute class. Now you already lost a fourth of your of your uh, learning experience because kids won't settle down. Yep. And it's chaos. The teachers mad at everybody. So you know it's frustrating on on many levels. So 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 my daughter, my oldest daughter, she completely uh, saw the difference immediately. The story with my youngest daughter, which was awesome. Yeah. She ended up going. She had, she had, no, you did. You went to shoe market for one year. My daughter went to. Oh, okay. Sorry. So she said she did notice the difference. So you got three generations there. I didn't realize. <laughs> yeah, yeah they, 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 they're like this. They're like this. So, so she's right. Okay, let me take it. Uh, so when she left there, she went back one year. So she went to the same. Right? She went to the same grade school that you went to. Oh yeah, my gosh. Oh my gosh. Schumacher. Yeah. 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 So she went to Schumacher. She yep. was there for one year. So at that time, they created Ed Choice. Right or, mm-hmm. or or it was fairly new, right? Yep. So Ed Choice was when uh, Bush Senior, pretty sure that's yeah, Bush Senior had created the Ed Choice program. Yep. So in that area, the uh, the the grading scale for that school was an F. Yep. That district, right? Okay. Grade. So she so she was able to go to a private school. I was so with some sort of tax, like a tax credit scholarship or something like that from yes. from from a private so she, person. Wow. Yep. That's amazing. So she went to she went to Emmanuel, um, Emmanuel Christian Academy. Okay. She was there that her, her she was there until she was there she was there until uh, her middle school, right? Okay. What happened was now it's time for me to change. It just so happened. This is when that gentleman comes into play. Now it's time for me to get her to like St. V, St. Mary, Hoban, all those private high schools. She was she had to test for those schools, but everything was still rather fresh. So they didn't want my daughter there because everything was still fresh. I remember. I was too. You guys were too controversial, kind of. It was just. Yeah. They they didn't want the attention. They did did not want the attention. So, okay, that was fine. But out of nowhere, I get an email. And this gentleman called me, his assistant. And he said, hi. Um, You know, he uh, he told me who he was. And he said, we want to pay for your daughter's school. Wow. They, yeah, they wanted to pay for my oldest daughter's school like college okay but i asked them would would does it matter i said because my oldest daughter is already she's get, by that point kayla was getting ready to, to graduate she had like two more years to go or something like that right okay she had graduated okay that's why okay so kayla had graduated but jada mind you they're four years in yeah. yeah 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 jada was getting ready to go to uh high school so i'm like oh my gosh well can you help me with my young i can put her in a private school so he, so he said yes. So he put my daughter uh, into a, it's called Our Lady of the Elms. It was an all-girls school. Yep. She absolutely hated it, but I loved it. I was so, <laughs> she hated it because she wanted boys there. She oh, right, of course. It was, it was, it was a Catholic school? It was a, yeah. Yeah, I, I went to a Catholic, I was a Catholic, I went to a Catholic all-boys school. I was, I was also not pleased to be uh, um, in a single-sex <laughs> environment, but a good school, a good school. But it was a good school. Right. Yeah. And she, and she advanced. And, and I mean, like, yeah. even when she was like a junior, sophomore, junior in school, she was getting letters from colleges. Yeah. Wanting her to come. Yeah. To yeah, yeah. That told me, so this whole thing, me I mean, me. it really set them on a path. I mean, even for your, for your oldest daughter, right? It g- gave her a sense of this isn't the only way things are, right? Like this, this school in which nobody's paying attention, in which the teachers are, are not not in control and they're not necessarily that skilled they're not necessarily that engaged there's there is something else out there yeah wait so i want to flash back so you said that your kids started reporting that that they were getting a little bit harassed like told that this isn't the place for you or things like that even before even before they kicked them out is that true yes yeah absolutely not not i don't my youngest one never said anything. So okay, I don't know if but it was middle. Her. It was middle school. It was. The, it was my oldest one. She yeah. said that she would be at her locker. I mean, like to this day, she she said she would be at her locker and they would walk to her, and that they were mean to her. The teacher, the teachers, talk. or the um, or the, the students, teachers. the teachers. The teachers. No way. Oh yes, my goodness. Teacher. Oh my goodness. 
Um, so did that did that make you nervous when they start when when she started getting that harassment? Like, did you start thinking, oh, you know, maybe they're gonna do something? That did it make you nervous? I, it it made me very nervous, and see, and that was at the end of when she, I, I, if I'm correct, that was towards the end of the school year. So, I, hold on, let me let my mom do what she got to do because she is she's rat, like a little rat on the side of me over here. <laughs> There's a lot going on. No worries. Take your time. <laughs> so, um, so, uh, so yeah. So it was towards the end of the year, and and the letter towards had the end of the first the, year, or the, towards the end of the second the year. Second year. Oh, okay. The second year. So did the first year go by with no problems, and then it was the second no. year when they started getting some harassment, or was really the first year even they got some harassment? The first year was when the lady would come to our door. She they would call. As soon as we got like. My kids would come in the house and drop their bags. You know, you, you know how your kids do. They would come in and drop their backpacks, and next thing you know, I'm getting a call saying, "Are your kids there?" Well, oh wait, yeah. wait. Um, are they, you're getting a call at your parents' house or at or at your yeah. house? Uh huh. And I would be at I would be at my parents' house, and they would call right after school. And they would say, oh right. Yeah, after school, and they would say, "Are you there? If if we come right now, would you be there?" Yeah. I'm like yeah, I'm here now. I'm answering the phone. Yeah. You know, come whenever you want. I'm yeah. Here. Yep. Um, okay. So you started getting these calls, but I mean, did you know something was up? Like you, you probably started thinking, oh, they're. I did, but I thought I didn't know. The first year, I didn't, I didn't, I just didn't think. I didn't think it was as serious as it was. I really didn't. Sure. So well, thinking... of course. Well, everybody, you know, other people who are doing this. Like we know. I mean, I know many people who've done this. Right. I may even have done it once or twice. Um, the, you know, it's just a very common thing and you just, you know, you assume I met some, I met a woman at the park. I met a woman at the park the other day who goes to my son's school and I was, you know, I introduced myself and we're chatting. He's actually on the little league team with my son and I'm <laughs> chatting with her, Kelly. And I say, say, I was like, um, yeah, so where do you live? And she said, oh, well, I live over here, but my parents live right next to the school. So I'm using their address. <laughs> and I said, hey. Well, uh, mm -hmm. I, you know, I don't. You probably don't know this, but uh, California has really strict laws. I don't think you're in any danger, right? But um, you know, there are laws about this kind of thing, and mm -hmm. she didn't know. She had no idea. In fact, I, I kind of wished I hadn't told her because the chances wow. that she'll go through what you went through, I think, are very, very small, right? It's just unlikely. Um, um, even if they got caught, they'd probably just kick them out. They're not going to, you know put somebody in jail. Yeah. Anyway, so let, let's get back. So so you, you start getting these calls. You just didn't think it was that serious. And then then they came to you. What so so then they came to you. Yeah, what what led to you withdrawing your kids from the school? Like what happened? So I received okay. So I received a letter from the uh, okay, so okay. The second year we 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 got this thing called the grandparent power of attorney. Okay. So we, Oh, so, so you thought that would help you. Yeah. Thought it would help. Yep. So we got that through the court. And so everything was fine, but we didn't know that they were fighting against the grandparent power of attorney. Mm. But if you went on their site, even to this day, well, I don't know about today because I haven't been on there in, in years now. Yep. Uh, they said they do accept grandparent power of attorney. Oh, really? Oh, huh. Yes. So, so with that being said, I'm just trying to think. So what happened was. Yeah, this was a while ago, huh? <laughs> it was a while. It was a while ago. They accept the grandparent power of attorney, but what happened was uh, that so that that June, Judge Teodosio sent me a letter and said, you know what, just uh, remove the kids and don't bring them back. I honored that. That was a cool wait. So so was it, wait. So yeah, but what what was your first notification from the district? You got a letter from the district saying saying the second year. Yeah, the, the second, second year, year you got at the very beginning. I got a letter saying we have uh, convinced we have. Uh, something true convincing evidence yep. that you do not live in the district and this, so, like so this that. was at the beginning of the second year so they may have hired the pi at the end of the first year really they may have been following your daughters at the end of the first year um, have, and i didn't even know it and so yeah. they sent you the letter and so what did you do when you got that letter did you you just you keep your kids in the and and do you is that when you did the grandfather the 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 grandparent power of attorney or yeah, that's when, that's when we, we, we were already in the process of trying to get that anyway. Okay. So, so, so we had gotten to, then we got it. It was like, what's the problem? Yeah. And they didn't, they did, they did not want to accept the grandparent power of attorney. So, 
you know, and th- and that's when the I guess that's when the fight began because they didn't want to accept it. So, so they took the, so that you took you to court. Then they took you to court. Is that right? They, they went to court, but we didn't even know they were going to court. About oh, okay. Okay, but but we got a letter from Judge Teodosio that that June, and that's when she said remove your kids, you know, from there, and then we did. Oh, so you, you so you never went in front of that judge. The judge, you just got a letter out of the blue from this judge that you've never met saying right. you got to remove your kids from the school. So the, the district kind of went behind your back. Um, yes, yes. And, and you didn't even really get a fair hearing. Yes, um, yes. Yep. Um, all right, so then you remove the kids and you, you put um, your oldest mm-hmm. daughter back in the Akron Public Schools. Um, mm-hmm. Yep, yep. Um, and how did your how did your daughters react to this whole thing like what 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 was yeah well i mean they were little right they were not that old they no they were not that old they were not they were so my kids were so confused um yeah. i i hated that for them they didn't understand and then of course the kids at school were not nice you they know weren't. because we have a local we have a local we had a back then. We had this little local magazine that yeah. called Busted. Okay. You ever heard of Busted? No. So Busted, what Busted does is if you if you end up in trouble, they take all the they go to the, um, I guess they went down to the county jail and they would take all the pictures of people who, oh. um, and they had a mug shot and then they got this, you know. So the kids, the kids. I guess they got a hold of uh, the magazine. It was like, so oh, these are the mom. these are the these are the kids in Akron, then. Yeah. 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 They were they were cruel to my little one, to my youngest one. They yeah. didn't She at the at, that was at Emmanuel Christian. Yep, that was at but, but that was a predominantly little black school, right? And those kids were so mean to da- my daughter. Like she was crying so mm-hmm. much. Ugh. She was crying so. I remember her saying that, That's you know, that, that that they were. And the teachers were mean too. What about that? You know, years that show, you know, that, that you've gone through this, but basically, your mom did it, so suck it up. She, she did, did it. Easy. She did it. Yeah, so, yeah, so. I, That's I didn't awful. Know. I, yeah. Yeah, I don't, I, didn't, I don't remember you. Uh, oh, 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 okay. I didn't know. Because the principal, well, when I got out, because the head principal always told me, that she, that she, I could have a job there. If yeah, the yeah, school didn't want me there anymore, you know, like she sidebar, you know, she was like, "Oh, I embrace you." I, I, you know, this is at the private so, school. Is that the private school? Yes. So she got some yeah. harassment even at the private school. Yeah. Uh, yes. yes she did. Yeah. Did Did your daughters maintain any relationships with the with the kids they met in Copley Fairlawn? Like, did, were there any friendships that survived that whole thing? <laughs> Um, they have one girl, uh, gotta leave Adriana. Adriana from Copley. For you, Ad- uh, 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 so she does have a friend, and then my, uh, then the one that I told you that her her dad was a uh, uh, ambassador for Egypt, uh-huh. Sarah, Maya. and Maya. Oh yeah, so yeah, so my daughter had like two, two good friends that she still communicate with and talk to. Oh wow, that's um, awesome. That's awesome. Yeah, so she has a few, and my and my youngest one has oh, yeah. one. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, just incredible. So, so, and, and just to trace this just through the end, um, or at least through the start of the whole judicial process, but you, you actually, you took your kids out of the school and then you didn't get any notification of the judicial, like the criminal prosecution that didn't come for like a year and a half later, right? 18 months later in November, right before the holidays. Yeah. That's horrible. Which was, which was, which was, Horrible, because it was right mm-hmm. before the holidays. How do you have a holiday with? with yeah. you got that, was under, you got you that got hanging that over your head. Plate. Yeah. Yeah. Did did, really did, did the other families did the other families who were using someone else's address, like the ones that you were commuting with, um, carpooling with from from Akron, were before the like before the prosecution came down? Were you guys talking about this and like whether or not they were being tra- like? Did they, was there any evidence that those those families were being tailed? So. So yeah, so 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 the one lady, her mother-in-law, was the president of the NAACP. Oh, right. Yeah. So when they went, so when they asked them about it, they had a, a meeting, and she brought her mother. Ah, uh, yeah. So they didn't want any parts of that. So yeah. So they said forget it. So they never bothered her again. Her kids ended up 
uh, graduating from that school and everything. Yep, yep. Yeah, they pro they probably expected that they could do this to you and nothing would happen. But th oh, yeah. thanks, thanks to your aunt, wasn't it your aunt, your aunt who who like really pressed, like figured out a way to get the word out about this? How did how did that happen? She went to Associated Press. Yeah. My she said that she stayed up for two three days. She did not go to sleep because I don't know if they still does that with the Associated Press. Like I don't know if the AP still goes across that screen like that because I don't watch, uh, you know, the, yeah. the, the social. The, the phones have taken over. It's all changed. I don't, I don't yeah, it's understand. all changed. I, I don't even, I don't yeah, understand I don't it. Yeah, like I, I don't to. understand but, it. But but in that era, in that time, so you, you watch the news, you would see that running across on the bottom, anything that, not just stocks and stuff like that. It was like other things, anything that was really important would go across the bottom of that screen. Yeah. And so she found a way to put mom arrested. And she said it wouldn't take, she wouldn't take. She said she had to study it for days. Yeah. She had to study it. She never went to sleep. She said her husband was giving her coffee every day. She said she was up on that computer. She said she was trying to find out. She found it. She found the key. She studied it. She studied it. She made the magic words. And, and she said then, she said, Kelly, she said, when I put it in there, she said it went on fire. That's amazing. That's, that's so, like, it's so cool. I mean, I mean, really, it really... Yeah, it's a it's an amazing turning point because this could have happened to you and no one could have ever found out about it, right? And all of right. this unjust injustice could have happened and you could have gone through all that pain, right? And for, you know, yes. for really no good reason, right? Your kids were just kicked out of the school, right. but be, due to her work, right? Like you were able to become a spokesman for this, a spokeswoman, right? And and to yeah, really make her. a make a civil rights yeah. issue out of this. I I it's amazing. Yeah. I yeah. 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 Go, ahead. Go ahead, Mom. She said, my sister said that she knows her niece, and she said that there's no way that she's a criminal. Yeah. She says, she's very, <laughs> now this is what she said. She said she's a very good person. She said there's no way that this should be happening to her. And she said she could not sleep, and she was going to stay up and, and fight and fight and fight and fight till somebody heard it. Yeah. That's she awesome. Really, that's, and she did verbatim. That's what she said. Yep. And, uh, and she did it. And, and, and she did it. And it went around. It. it went around. And I mean, they said, and I don't know, but this is what they were telling me. They said that in her chambers, in that judge's chambers, mm -hmm. they had to unplug her all phone. Phones. Yeah. All the phones yeah. in her chambers. Well, because it, people from all over were calling in and saying, you're not. This is not true. Well, and it, it's interesting, you know, so we just released this report saying, you know, let's decriminalize address sharing. Let's not put people in jail like Kelly for using someone else's address because we know tens of thousands mm -hmm. of people do this every year. Yeah. Um, yeah. And all the reporters kept asking, well, where do you have any more recent examples? Do you have any more recent? What I kept telling them is, you know, with 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 what happened to Kelly. Right. And then the George Floyd, you know, blow up. Mm -hmm. Right. These districts do not want to prosecute people, but what they're doing, I think, is they're using the threat of prosecution to kick the mm -hmm. kids out of school, right? Right. And, uh, you know, they want to avoid the prosecutions because they don't want the publicity. They don't want their phones ringing off the hook, right? Um, mm -hmm. Because this That's looks right. bad for them, but they still want to use the power of the law mm -hmm. to keep people yeah. out of schools. And so... Mm -hmm. That's right. Anyway, I think I do think you've done a good thing, and I think there's probably lots of people who've been allowed to go to schools, Kelly, because of what happened yeah. to you, right? I think they've been allowed to go to schools. Um, That's right. Um, um, and probably not been kicked out of schools precisely because mm -hmm. districts don't want to go through what you put them they through. They don't want to go you, through What that. you put them through. What you and your aunt they were put them through. The judicial they were bullies. They were yeah. They were bullies. I, I used to say when my dad was alive, and we were all talking about it, when it acid. I, I don't know if this word sounds appropriate. Or, but I used to call them litigation gangsters. Yeah, yeah. Litigation gangsters because they're bullies and they would and they, they come in and they corrupt lives, they tear lives up, and and it wasn't like with no regard, like, with no regard, yeah. With no regard, they yeah. were vicious. They were vicious. It was you. I was in the lion's mouth, and they weren't just going to let it go. Like yep. they were vicious during yeah. the the, the during the. What is that called? When they go to uh, create the jurors? Yeah. Man, they made me out to be the worst person. It's sure. Like, am I in trial? I was like, what am I in trial for? What? Yeah. What, 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 for trying, really, trying what, to get what, your what, trying to get your kids a better education. Right. In they a school ten like minutes from your video. ten minutes from your house. Yeah. yeah. Ten yeah. minutes from my house. Yeah. Exactly. They're, they're, 
they're gangsters and they're they're everything they call Kelly Cobb Kelly a liar. They're liars. Yeah, it exactly. Was, and then they and then they, and then the prosecutors would bring in donuts for like my attorney. Yeah, uh, they would like. This is this is that you know what's going it's on. A club. It's, a club. it's a club. It's a club. It's a club. They play golf together. Yeah, it's exactly. They do. Yeah, it's, it's their house. They're all in the same place. They yeah. play together. So they do things, but you don't. You know, as a regular mm-hmm. citizen that never really, I never been in trouble yeah. before. I didn't know. Yeah. I didn't know that. You know, they they, they all get together afterwards. Believe me, they yeah. they had many conversations about my case. Mm-hmm. Um, when when uh, in Akron, when um when all that had taken place. Sure. I know they did because they the way they were, uh. Mm-hmm. Yeah. During our during the trial. Yeah. No, I believe it. Oh. Well, anyway, I I actually have to go and pick up my kids from school. Um, but okay. before before I do that, um, where where are your where are your daughters now? What are they What are they up to? Okay, so my youngest my youngest yeah, one, she's so huh. So Start with the oldest. <laughs> well, you sit right here, so maybe that's why. I'm a, I'm, a, I'm always a fan of starting with the oldest. <laughs> okay. Okay. I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. It doesn't matter. Go ahead. She, She's here in Akron. She she was working at the schools. She was working at another high school, but it got too trying. So she was worried because it was it was um, a lot going on. Yeah. So she ended up leaving that school, and now she works for like a metropolitan housing. Oh, great! And she has her IT. She has her IT associate degree. Yep. And so yeah, so she's doing she's doing she's doing amazing. She's doing mm-hmm. good. She's uh, trying to start her little. She she likes cookies, so she wants to start a business mm-hmm. with cookies. Oh, that's awesome. And blankets. Yeah. <laughs> And then my my youngest one, she lives in North Carolina, but she's up here for the weekend because this weekend is my mom's birthday. Oh, cool! Happy birthday! Yes. Nice <laughs> scam. <laughs> so so Jada flew up here. She hadn't been up here in a year, so she flew up here, um, and she works. What do you work? Uh, I work in Scrum. Something called Scrum. You ever heard of Scrum? Oh, you were telling me about it. I remember you were telling me about yeah her job. I can't remember what is it. Rem- refresh my memory. So it's like a product manager. Yeah, I am in pro- I'm in pro- I'm in project management. She's in project management. Um, I'm an assistant right now. Assistant. And what I is Scrum? What kind of what, what kind of what kind of uh, product is it? So I work at Scrum Alliance specifically. So we um we build courses and we offer e-learning for those who want to get into Scrum. So we offer certifications. So Scrum Master, product owners, um, developers, things like that. And so it's basically, <laughs> it's basically Scrum essentially is an agile framework. It's coming out of the waterfall system the waterfall framework is coming out of that and trying to have have more agile frameworks inside of companies to better produce products oh cool listen this is my daughter saying <laughs> all <laughs> that all went that all went all right over my head but it sounds it sounds really cool it sounds really cool <laughs> and and also i got you know tim i told you did i tell you i have i have my autobiography book that i've been trying to Oh, you're working on a book? Oh, I didn't know that. I didn't know that. Cool. Yeah, yeah. so I have an autobiography book. I've had it for a while, but I just said, so what are you going to do? You just going you you did all that work and, you, and you're not going to, you know, push it. And so so I I've, I've been I've been pushing that book too. I don't oh, know cool. To say that. Oh, I got to check it out. I got to check it out. Um that's awesome. I'll send it to you. Yeah, no, send me. I'll just send you the email. Yeah, that'd be great. That'd be great. Cool. Well, thank you so much, Kelly. I really appreciate it. Um, it was really fun to kind of have a further reaching conversation um, and kind of figure out where you came from. So um, really appreciate it. Hey, we could do it again, too. If yeah. you have any questions, you know, let me know and, and uh, we'll, we'll make it happen again. Yeah, and hopefully we'll, we'll connect in person at some point in the next couple of months. Yes, yes. And you know, I go to Atlanta in a couple of weeks. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. Okay, cool. All right, thanks. Have a great day. Well, you All right. too. Bye-bye. Bye.